Hey there, I'm Angela Sharp and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I had a lot of fun this weekend. You know, I'm kind of preparing for Easter, if you will. So over the weekend, I got to get together with some of my girlfriends and we went to an adult Easter egg hunt. Shockingly, there was mostly women at this adult Easter egg hunt, but it was a lot of fun. Plus we got to meet the bunny and I won a gift certificate. So it's always better when you win. It rained a little bit, but that's okay. And then if you've been watching this show for any amount of time, you know, recently I've been kind of doing Route 66 in the local area, right? Eventually I want to do the whole thing, but kind of taking little day trips to do like what's just around here. And when I get obsessed with something, I'm obsessed with it forever, right? So again, this past weekend, I went on out and did Route 66. We went out to Cuba. That is the world's second largest rocking chair. It used to be the first largest, but then another one was made bigger. And I feel like that's fun. So I went and we took some photos with that and then we continued all the way Route 66 home. There's some great murals to take photos with there in Cuba. And of course, they had that awesome motel right there with that. I mean, I feel like if you went at night, that would be all lit up and that would make it even better. But I just, I just love going on little day trips in the Firebird, so lots of fun. Now, you know what else is lots of fun? Is when you have a show like this and you get to invite guests on, sometimes you invite guests on because you're super confused, right? Well, that is what I've done today. Everybody is talking about the solar eclipse that is coming up on the 8th of April. And so I was like, ah, I need to know more information about this. Who else should we call? How about the manager of the James S. McDonald Planetarium? I've got Mr. Snyder here with us today. He is gonna be telling us everything we need to know about if you're staying here and watching the solar eclipse, or if you're going to totality, and of course, what the Science Center has going on with them as well. So let's get started with the Daily Mix. Got great stuff coming your way. Park is once again in the running for USA Today's 10 Best Reader's Choice poll for the Best City Park. The park has taken the top spot the last two years, so let's help them get there again. You can vote once daily now through April 8th. Just go to 10best.com slash awards and click on the Best City Park poll. It's always fun when we can get our awesome destinations in a 10 best list. Now, a popular destination in Forest Park is, of course, the St. Louis Zoo. And now is a great time to visit because the California sea lions have reported for spring training. Visitors can watch as the sea lions work on their high jumps, flipper walks, high dives, and more. I absolutely love going to this. I took my nephew a couple years ago, and he really, 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 really wanted to catch a frisbee they throw out so I was able to let him catch that. Actually, I caught it and gave it to him. So much fun. Now, during the show, staff will explain sea lion behavior and positive reinforcement training, animal fun facts, and the need for conserving the sea lion's ocean habitat. Spring training shows run daily through March 31st. You can learn more at stlzoo.org. And the St. Louis Cardinals are wrapping up their spring training and fans are making plans for the home opener just days away. There is no doubt opening day is the unofficial holiday in St. Louis. Whether you're among the thousands of fans who have a ticket or not, everyone is welcome to come out and take part in opening day pep rally at the plaza at Ballpark Village. I think this is so much fun. I've been out there a number of times with STL TV covering all the opening day fun. And I love talking to people that don't have tickets, that come every year, they take off work, they've either called in sick or it's a personal day. And they're out there just to be out there and experience all the hoopla that goes with our Cardinals opening day. The home opener will also feature a pregame ceremony with a motorcade introducing this year's roster and honoring the club's Hall of Famers and more. The home opener is set for Thursday, April 4th at 315 versus the Miami Marlins. 
Visit cardinals.com for a full schedule and more. Now the Grio Museum of Black History, the city's oldest black history museum, recently announced the gift of the personal black history collection of a St. Louis icon, Alice M. Wyndham. The donation includes her extensive library, personal and professional documents, photographs, and more, which will be preserved through the Alice M. Wyndham Initiative. The community is welcome to attend a reception to recognize the gift and launch the initiative on Saturday, March 30th, which is also Wyndham's birthday. I love that. From 2 to 4 p.m. at The Grio. For more information, visit thegriotmuseum.com or call the number that's right there on your screen. Now there's a new art show connecting artists, coders, and engineering, and it will debut this weekend. Digital Ephemera is an event that explores multimedia experiences, creative coding, and the creative use of electronics in immersive experiences. Come dressed in white with lights and you can be part of the experience. The opening reception is this Friday, March 29th from seven to midnight. They're also planning on having an artist panel during the day on Saturday, as well as additional showing of some of the works that evening. Now this is all gonna take place at the William A. Kern Foundation. You can find all the details at digitalephemera.art and their Facebook event page. Dance St. Louis will continue its 58th season by presenting Body Traffic, one of the most talked about young companies nationwide. The Los Angeles-based contemporary dance company has become known for its compelling style of attitude and urban edge, as noted by the Boston Globe. Their stunning performances appeal to new audiences and dance lovers alike. And they'll be taking the stage at the Two Hill Performing Arts Center on Saturday, April 6th at 7.30. There'll be a free Speaking of Dance pre-show Q&A in the lobby at 6.30. For tickets and more information, go to dancestlouis.org. All right, who here remembers Roadhouse, the movie Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? I don't remember it, but my dad remembered it and he loved it, right? So when I heard there was a new Roadhouse, I was like, we have to go see this. So I took dad. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's never really been my favorite. I don't really know anything he's been in, but I thought he did really well in this. Are there parts that are kind of cheesy? Yes, but that's the whole purpose of the movie. There's a lot of action, a lot of fun. I'm gonna stop talking. Just check this out. Before we start, do you have insurance? What? Your coverage good? Like, you have dental? Oh, haha. -ha. Is there a hospital nearby? Is it like too far? It's about like 25 minutes, I'd say. Uh, I just slapped you. Are you all right? What? So you like to fight. You ever win? No one ever wins a fight. This ain't the holiday in, pal. I am, I'm moving. A friend of mine suggested I come talk to you. I own a roadhouse out in the Florida Keys. Lately, it's been attracting the wrong clientele. I can pay you good money. Judging by your car, you need this. Well, I like my car. Think about it. Come on, brother. I know who you are. Elwood Dalton, the fan man. That guy's got a knife under his shirt. You just take a big step back and pop me in the face. You can do it. Tell me about this fountain. Yeah, it's all nice, like he's Mr. Rogers or something, but then he'll haul off. <laughs> really interesting guy, overall. Rand wants to take the roadhouse away from me. He wants to build some resort. I should warn you, people have a certain way of getting things done around here. Hey, fellas. Looks like you're having a smashing night. Dogging. I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Let me guess. You know, threaten me. Tell me to get out of town. I get the impression that you can't be threatened. Once Knox is on the job, it's over, baby. It takes a lot to get me angry, but when I am, 
I just can't let go. People seem a little aggressive around here. Is that one in front of yours? No, I just broke his arm. I mean, how fun is that? Yeah, I didn't tell you that Conor McGregor's in that. I think he's actually just playing himself. Post Malone is also in that. Breland's in that. If you're into action, you definitely have to check it out. But by the magic of TV, I'm now joined by my guest, Will Snyder, the manager of the Planetarium. I'm going to say the manager of fun at the Planetarium. Absolutely. That works, right? It definitely does. Now, I had to have you come out here because I am one of those people who's like, okay, I saw the eclipse mm -hmm. in 17. It was fun to watch with my nephew. Mm -hmm. But why are we making such a big deal out of the one coming up on the 8th? I think it's a really good question because especially being here in St. Louis, a lot of people remember back in 2017, a total solar eclipse happened. Mm -hmm. But I don't think people really recognize just how rare it is on a human scale for us to have one here again seven years later. On average, you can go 375 years staying in the same oh. spot without seeing one. So the fact that we get two back to back, that's really special. That really is special. And so like <laughs> maybe somebody, you know, forgot what happened in 17 or, or didn't watch. What would you tell them? about this, like what is gonna happen? Sure, so what's gonna happen is all about location. It depends on where you are. So okay. if you remember the event in 2017, the total solar eclipse came through the metro area. That's not the case this time. Okay. So most of St. Louis Metro is gonna get a partial solar eclipse. Okay. That name basically means part of the sun's light is blocked, which I think makes sense. And you do wanna be safe whenever looking at the sun, so we can talk about right. that. Yeah, yeah. But the main event is the total solar eclipse. If people wanna see that, they're gonna take a short drive down to places along the path in Southern Missouri and Illinois. But that's really the sort of once in a lifetime opportunity. That is once in a lifetime. So that is, when it's total, you mean, it's, the sun is totally covered. Exactly. So in a total solar eclipse, the moon is at that perfect place to block out the sun in the sky. It's the only time in your life you can safely look right up at the sun. You can see the solar corona. The sky grows dark. And I mean, it's surreal. It's something that people remember for the rest of their life. That's, I mean, I love how passionate you are about it. And this is why I had you come on here, because I feel like there's a lot of people like me. They're like, I am so confused. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of a, one of those big events. Now, when you say total, how dark is it going to get in those places that it's total? Sure. So that's that's a good question, and it depends on where you are in the path. So anyone that's looked at the maps for this event, the path will come up from Mexico, through the Midwest, and go up towards the Great Lakes, New England. But where you are in the path determines two things. The closer you are to the center, the longer totality will last. Okay. And if you're going to take a trip, you want to get as much as yeah. possible, right? But also, the closer you are to the center, the darker it will be during totality, oh, too. Oh, OK. You're deeper in that shadow. And depending on where you are, it will get, we describe it as dusk, it gets like a 360 to the degree sunset, you can start to see some of the bright stars and planets come out. I love that. Now, you said we have to watch it safely. Yes. So what does that mean? So it's one of those things should go without saying, right? We should never look directly at the sun with our eyes. And here comes an eclipse. Everyone's tempted to do it. So at any point of the eclipse, if you're getting a partial view, so part of the sun's light is blocked, you want to watch it safely. One of the easiest things, of course, is to get some solar glasses. Ah, People might remember those from yes, 2017. Okay. So, you know, solar glasses glasses aren't sunglasses. They block out a really high percentage of sunlight to make it safe to watch the partial phases of the eclipse. And if you stay in St. Louis, you want to use those glasses or other safe viewing methods the whole time. But if you're in the path of totality, there will be those few minutes where you can take your glasses off oh, and neat. directly look at the sun overhead. Well, let me see these glasses because you brought a pair in yeah. to kind of show us off what they look like. These are, I mean, they look like 3D glasses from a movie back in the <laughs> 80s. But oh, wow, it's it's dark in here. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is very safe. That is very safe glasses. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Now, what are you guys doing at the Science Center? Let's say I'm not going to make the journey to totality. I'm sure you guys have events planned. We definitely do. And now in the lead up to the eclipse, it's all about preparation. Okay. So if you want to learn about the eclipse, if you want to get glasses, of course, come on into the Science Center and Planetarium. We do have a show in our planetarium called Eclipse, and it's all about it, why they happen, how to safely observe it. And you do get glasses as part of that show. Oh, or if you don't have time for that, our gift shop has glasses.
classes in the weekend of the eclipse. We'll have several events on Saturday. There will be a day long festivities with all sorts of great activities and free eclipse classes while supplies last. While supplies last, well I love that as we get closer. Mm -hmm. Now you guys are even taking some people out, right? We are, so that's the cool thing. You know, here in the Metro, we'll get a 99% partial eclipse, which okay. Typically 99% of anything sounds really good, yeah. but we try to remind people a 99% partial eclipse is still a 0% total solar eclipse. <laughs> so everybody at the planetarium, we wanna see totality and we are taking several buses of folks down to the path so that we can enjoy the event and get that once in a lifetime experience. That, I mean, I just, you're so passionate about it. I love it so much. Now, do we have any idea when the next solar eclipse will be coming our way? Sure, so when we talk about solar eclipses, they're rare locationally. So every okay. year you're gonna have at least two solar eclipses somewhere, okay. but to see one in the same place is pretty rare. The next one that will be over a large part of the United States won't be until 2045, so over oh. 20 years from now. So, so you really need to go check this one out because the next one's really not on its way. Exactly, so you gotta wait over 20 years. So you want to take this opportunity and you got to cross your fingers for clear skies. I love that. Now, the science behind this is just that the, the moon is blocking the sun, right? Like this. You're right. So, you know, the moon goes around the Earth, but the big question should be, why don't you have eclipses every month then? Yeah. So the moon's orbit is tilted a little bit relative to the plane of our solar system. More majority of the time, our shadows don't align. But when those cycles do align in the sky, that's when we get the special events like lunar and solar eclipses. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's, there's so much to know about these. This is so much fun. Now, when I took my nephew out there, he was very little and didn't really understand, but now as, as kids are getting older, I'm sure there's a lot more questions for you at the Science Center when you're doing the eclipse leading up. You're right, it is something that I think sparks people's curiosity because fundamentally, yeah, the moon's going around the earth, it blocks out some of the sun's light, but when you think about it, this is something that in the past, these were unpredictable events. Maybe something that would be terrifying that the sun grows dark in the oh, middle yeah, of the day. Right. But now we look forward to these events with anticipation and it's simply by humans throughout history that observed cycles in the sky that got us to where we are today. I love the way you say that because <laughs> things that are scary might not be scary down the line. Exactly. Which is I like that yeah. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Now, have you had a lot of kids or parents asking you guys questions over there to kind of get ready themselves? We certainly have. You know, hype is building. And right. we had a partial eclipse back in October of last year. Pretty much ever since then, people have been coming in hungry to learn more, get glasses, and make sure they're in the right place for the event. I love it. And, and you're so passionate about this. Let's talk about what some of those things that are happening mm -hmm. again that you guys are doing over there at the Science Center. Yeah, so I think especially the weekend of the eclipse, okay. there's lots of opportunities for people to come Come in, have fun of course, and learn some things about science. On Friday night leading up to the eclipse, we'll have our first Friday event where if the weather's clear, we'll have evening telescopes outside too. And that's a great opportunity to see things like the moons of Jupiter right now. The next day is that Saturday event where all day long we'll be giving away eclipse glasses as well as having partners from all around the St. Louis area talking about agriculture and other events in the great outdoors. Oh, okay, very cool. <laughs> and you are, I, I said manager, but you're manager of fun, right? <laughs> we try to make it fun, exactly. <laughs> so is there always something new happening at the Science Center, you know, past, if we get past the solar eclipse, is there different things happening over there at the planetarium? Definitely, you know, that's the cool thing especially about working in the planetarium. There's there's always something cool happening overhead. There's a lot of hype later in this year for a possibly really good comet that will be visible in St. Oh, Louis. Okay. So we're looking forward to that in the fall. And really, anytime people see anything above them, if they're curious about what's going on, the planetarium is a great resource in the community to come learn and figure out something cool. Absolutely, I mean, there's so much for us to cover. What have I missed that you feel like people need to know about this solar eclipse? I think as people get ready, timing is one of the things they'll probably be curious about. Yeah. So if you're staying in the St. Louis area, the eclipse will start right around 1245. Okay. And what that means is that's when the first little bit of the moon will block out some of the sun's light. People should remember to watch those partial phases. You wanna use those glasses oh, or right. other safe viewing methods. And then maximum eclipse, as much the sun that will be covered by the moon will be right around two o'clock. Oh, okay. So that's the big time. If you're only gonna go out once, I would go out at two. And if you're traveling to the path, those times might vary slightly, but you wanna keep those in mind so you know when you can take your glasses off if you're in the path. So you can watch it. And we, we've been showing some maps on the screen mm -hmm. and it, it kind of is kind of taking over 
like the whole little sl slice there, right there it in the is. middle. So there's going to be a lot of people that'll be able to see this total eclipse. It's not just us here exactly. in the area. And if you remember the one in 2017, this eclipse comes over roughly four times the amount of populated areas. So there are millions of people already within this path. And if you can judge by hotels and flights being booked, yeah. there are people from all over the world coming to the United States to watch this event. That's really exciting when you think about it like that, mm -hmm. kind of all these people from outside want to come and, and be in that totality path or a partial path like we are. You're exactly right. And it's something once you see one total solar eclipse, you know, people are bit by the bug. They want to travel to see other ones. And it's something that you know, once you've seen it, you understand why it's a big deal. So you think no matter what, if you're in the local area, you should go out and look at that partial eclipse. But if you're not in the local area and, and you've got the time, go ahead and make your way to totality. Exactly, we sound like a broken record, but we want everyone to see totality if they can, but we know you might be stuck at work, you might have school, so at the least, be prepared with your glasses and make sure you can go outside to see the partial eclipse. I love it, well let's just go through everything you guys have going on in the Science Center one more time so people can kinda get a grab on what is happening. Yeah, if they wanna learn about the eclipse now, coming in and seeing our Eclipse Star Show is by far one of the best ways. Not only can you learn about the science of eclipses, but you do get eclipse glasses, so you'll be ready for the eighth. Then, the weekend of the eclipse, we'll have events on Friday night and Saturday, giving away solar glasses. And one I didn't mention is on Sundays, we do solar telescopes outside. Oh, so they can come fun. out and check that out too. We've got kind of a, like a little list right up there on our screen right now, and we didn't even talk about the Little Shop of Horrors, mm -hmm. but you're gonna kind of talk about the science behind what the Little Shop of Horrors tells us could happen. Exactly, because like you said, we want to make it fun. So the Little Shop of Horrors does feature a solar eclipse. Yeah. So it'll be a fun time to, if you like that movie or you like eclipses, come in and have a good time regardless. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming and educating myself and everybody else who is <laughs> like me. There's so many people who know about it and I'm always like, but I don't understand. I get it now. Yeah. I'm going to go outside at least here and see the partial exactly. eclipse. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so much for joining Thanks me today. Thanks for having me, absolutely. Now make sure you follow the science Center so you can keep up with what they've got going on. Like you said, there's events going on all the time at the Science Center. Even after we get past the eclipse, there's going to be a lot of fun. So they've got all their social media handles on there. And you can also check out greatamericaneclipse.com. We got some of the graphics that we took right from them as well. So you can find out more information about the clips from them. Now, after you follow all those people, and I know you're going to, then you're going to follow us on our Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube. You can even drop us a line at SCLT. Net. Of course, we want to hear from you. Let me know what you want to know about so I can have them on the show and they can educate all of us. Thanks again for joining me. Thank you very much. Keep it right here in STL TV and Experience St. Louis. I'll see you next time.